Good day, everyone. My name is Florence Opodeli, and you are watching the U Multicultural Community Hour. I come from a culture where community defines the people. Community is everything. My culture believes that a thriving community is the foundation for fulfilling life potential. We therefore place huge emphasis on making our community strong. This show is about our community, your community. In this episode, we have the pleasure of having Malaika Mustafa with us today. Malaika is a Winnipeg local children's literature author and illustrator. Her stories are inspired by her experiences growing up, influenced by Nigerian, Ghanaian, Filipino, and Canadian cultures. As a writer, she aims to create stories of family, friendship, and adventure that all readers can enjoy. As an artist, her mission is to create the representation that she never had growing up by creating diverse characters. Every stroke of her digital pen is a commitment to positive representation and diversity. Malaika wants to ensure that every child sees themselves reflected in her stories. With her books already shaping the literal landscape, Malaika is excited to continue telling her stories and creating art to educate and inspire in this ongoing journey of imagination, inclusivity, and adventure. Thank you for joining us here, Malaika. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to have you on our show. So um, just tell us about yourself. My name is Malaika. I graduated from the University of Winnipeg and... I began creating um, my children's book. So what inspired you to go into creating children's book? Um, I really just wanted to create stories and illustrations that um, would have a positive impact that would inspire children and just something fun that they can relate to. A lot of the times, um, stories for Black children or for children of color can be a little bit heavy because of all of the sort of issues that we face in society. So I just want to create something fun. Wow. And so can you tell readers your mission? What's your mission when you say you want to create books that um, children from um, cultural background can um, identify with? Um, what's your goal and what's your mission in doing that? Yeah, my um, mission is always to create positive um, representation through diversity. So what I mean by that, even though we can see that there's more diversity with, you know, movie, TVs, books um, for children, Mm -hmm. um, it's still sometimes not so positive. Even um, books that are by Black authors or, you know, movies that are written by Black writers, we still see some elements of, like, struggle and trauma. So, um, as an example, the book Sulwe by Lupita Nyong'o, that was one that came out um, in recent years. And it's about a dark-skinned girl who is learning to love herself, which is an important message but in the first like few pages of the book she's getting bullied they're calling her blackie and darkie and she's you know trying to scrub her skin off she's crying and praying that she wakes up lighter and that is um you know traumatic for kids to read so my mission I guess was to be able to show children that they can be confident, beautiful, strong without like first telling them that they are ugly or that they're not deserving. Wow, that's that's amazing. That's very good. Um, you know, I grew up in I, I didn't have all that growing up. I grew up where everybody is my color, so I thought I, I didn't have to think about yeah. the fact that I'm ugly or this it doesn't come to our mindset but um yeah tell me um do you find while growing up maybe you can share a little bit to the viewers about your own um experiences growing up was it something that that is very very you know out there for you yeah definitely um I'm not sure about kids today I mean I hope that things are you know getting better but yeah in my time definitely 
um you know people would make fun of your name they'll make fun of you know when you bring lunch to school i have you know jollof rice and one day somebody said ew you need to get that rice at tampon and i'm like it's what? just it's tomato stew like what? you know so things like that and then um yeah with the skin color as well um, you know, me and my sister, people would tell us that we're not sisters because we're different color, that our parents are not our parents. And like wow. one day um, my dad was dropping me off at school and then people are asking, who's that black man? I'm like, that's my dad. And they're like, no, that can't be your dad. Look at like your color. And I'm like, you do know that I'm black, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's really, uh, I mean, hearing that, it's really, um, it hurts, right? Yeah. At that time. Yeah. And um, we're talking about community. Um, in, a, in, a, in a community, we want everybody to belong. We want everybody to be part of the community. We want everyone to be appreciated. We don't want to look the same. We don't want to act the same. We just want to act in harmony and bring the beauty of our community. So I'm hoping that, um, um, you know, the, uh, bring it down to recent now, do you think such things still go on in schools? Um, I think maybe so, but I'm still hopeful that things can get better. Even like when my younger siblings were in school, there was a day my sister... Um, Samira wore her afro and then kids were making fun of her they were telling her you know go pick cotton and all those oh, kinds of things what? yeah <laughs> so it's still hard and I know that you know we still have work to do yes indeed we still have work to do and I'm so happy that um, Malaika Mustafa is here today to enlighten us on, on what she is doing to make our community better. Um, viewers, you are watching Community Hour from your multicultural channel. And today we are talking about how we can make our community better. And we have as our guest, Malaika Mustafa, who, has, who is an author and has written books. Um, this is uh, two of her books that I have. And all her stories are originated from her own experiences uh, as a child growing up in Winnipeg uh, or in our community. But um, back to you, Malaika. Can you tell us a little bit about your first book, Amina's Afro? Yes. So um, Amina's Afro is a story about Amina, and she is trying different hairstyles, and her friends try to copy her. But um, in the end, she gets them to stop copying her and... Everyone is happy just being themselves. And uh, the other book, the second book, the, Jamila's Family. The second book, Jamila's Family, this one is based on my family. So it's a multicultural and multi-generational family. And it's just about all of the things that they like to do together. Thank you. I... I... When I went through this book, what comes to me is family, you know? Yeah. Family as it's supposed to be. Everybody in the family is appreciated. The uncle, the uncles, the aunties, the grandma, the, the cousins, the many cousins that you will never know all of them, but they are there. And each time you get to meet any new one, you is, is your cousin and you are okay with it. And tell me, Malika, what has changed? Between what you have written and what we are seeing right now, do you think anything changes on the way the family uh, setup has been uh, is right now? Um, I think maybe like culturally for us, it's normal to grow up, like you said, with so many cousins, with aunties and uncles, with grandma living in the house, everybody together. And um, I think like in Canadian culture, maybe we lose that a little bit because the lifestyle here is different. Everybody has to work. Everybody has to do things. There's um, maybe not as much community, but I think that we are still keeping it strong. Yes. 
That's true. We are keeping it strong, and that is the word. Uh, viewers, you are watching Community Hour, and today we are keeping it strong in the family. Um, our guest today is talking about how we can maintain the family ties that we all have. All the uncles, the grandma, the grandpa, the cousins, the, the, the siblings, each person has a role, and we are all there to appreciate one another and help each other grow. So, um, again, we come back to you, Malika. Mm -hmm. I know your book is so interesting. Tell me, who are the, uh, the book is adapted for what age? Um, I would say like four to 10, maybe five to 10, depending five on the ten. reading level. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, they are such an interesting books. I love the books. I love the books. I, not just because it's, um, it speaks to my color, but. I love the book because it speaks to diversity in a way that everybody can understand, right? Yeah. Um, you said your grandma, you, your grandmother is Filipino, your mother is from Ghana, and this person from Nigeria, yeah. and uh, Canadian. So everybody is all in this book, as uncles, as cousins, as, and it's interesting. Thank you so much, Malaika. Thank you. Um, before we move on, I just want to ask one quick question that was just bugging in my mind. What challenges do you face while you are doing this? Yes. Yeah, so um, I illustrated the books as well. So as a digital artist, you know, we have to pay for different apps and software and things to create these illustrations. And uh, we also have to purchase additional like brushes and textures and things to create sort of the style that you're going for. So within that, out of all of the apps, all of the programs that I use, none of them have any curly hair textures, any braids, things like that. And so I had to figure out first how to create all of that myself before I could begin um, drawing the book. So that's an example. So how do you create that yourself? Yeah. You don't have, I can't believe viewers that at our modern age, they don't have yeah. oily hair app, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what you call it? Yeah, like the brushes, the textures. The textures to make oily hair. <laughs> you are, uh, in 2024, and you talk about knowing your culture, right? And knowing him as a community. Yeah. This is something that we need to all be aware of. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm surprised. Yes. Yeah, so... so what did you use to improvise for the, for the... Yeah, so I had to kind of... Um... On the broad. <laughs> <laughs> I had to like try and kind of reverse engineer. So first I would draw a braid and then look at sort of the structure of how the brush is created and then try and replicate like a braid into that. And then I did, everybody has different, you know, curls. So mm -hmm. this brush is different than this one is different than this one. So mm -hmm. I had to, um, like, I would look at my own hair and see mm -hmm. kind of the pattern, look at, you know, my brother's hair and see... <laughs> Yeah, uh, not even great though, guy. Have, yeah. yeah, even <laughs> though we have curly hair, like my curl texture would be different from your curl texture, different from the next person. So it was important to me that they were all different still. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Wow. And do you see yourself see more challenges as you grow? Um, well, I think the challenge would be to get um, other people to kind of accept that and make it normal. So um, I discovered while I was, you know, trying to make these brushes and everything that a lot of uh, black artists or, you know, artists with curly hair, artists with, you know, whatever, they also have to make their own kind of tools. So... Um, I think it's important to get these drawing apps and these, uh, you know, software to include that because if their apps are for everybody, then everybody should be able to, <laughs> you know, draw themselves with it. So, wow, that's that's amazing. Thank you so much for bringing this. I tell you, when, when I was reading the um, Jamila's family, 
I remember thinking at the time when my kids were young and I was, you know, they come home with books to read <laughs> and I have to sit them down to read the books. And sometimes I flip the pages of the book myself and I try to read the pages of the book. And then one time, you know, and uh, we were over names. We were talking about names, you know, my son's name. My son was thinking that um, his name is too long and people can't pronounce it. So he went for the shorter form, you know, and I keep saying, no, I need that name in your certificate. It has to be there. It has to be there. That's your identity. And, and then what struck me was if there are more books with these names that kids have to read and learn to pronounce it, then it doesn't sound new all the time, right? Yeah. So I think, how, had somebody mentioned to you about the names you use in your books, the, the, the names in your books, has people mentioned to you anything about it, good or bad? Um, no, actually, you're the first to bring it up, but I'm glad you did because I, you know, am sort of intentionally choosing these names. It's not like... Uh, you know, Stephanie, Brittany, like, I want to make sure that these are names that people can learn and can yeah. know. And like Jamila, I feel like is a common name. Just so, like, Jamila is a common name. Jamila is a, everybody can pronounce Jamila and, and easy. And, but you see, the interesting aspect is when kids learn to read the book and learn to pronounce the book from young, then they get used to learning how to pronounce a lot of foreign names or other or names from other background or other cultures. Serena, people can pronounce Serena. And um Marcos. Marcos is English, so they sh people sh it should be easy. We'll take us through another where is another name. Um okay, I also like the one of Jamal. Selena and Serena. <laughs> Serena and Selena. <laughs> These are pure, uh, two names that look the same, but with the difference of R and L. Why did you choose to use those two names? So because this is based on my own family, my cousins, the twins, their names are Safina and Safira. So What's same that? kind of thing where the name is similar, but it's set for that one sound and I actually thought about using their real names, but then I thought, let me just yeah. change it up a little. <laughs> no, that's good. It's it's wonderful. I really love the book and and the illustrations you've used there. Um, viewers, we are talking to Malaika Mustafa, an author in uh, a young author and an illustrator who has uh, written two books on children's books coming from different cultures. Um, our our advise people to get a, get their hands on this book for their kids. It's another way of learning what family means to us. Um, again, back to you. I would like to ask what, if you are successful in this, what will success mean to you as a person and what will success mean to you as a community? Okay, so I think that um, I'm already successful because... My mission was to create that representation and diversity to have like a positive impact to uplift and to inspire children. And every day I get people sending me messages like I just got one the other day. This woman says, my daughter's name is Jamila. I'm black. Her dad is Asian. We have a big family. Like, thank you for this book. So um, she was thinking as well. Yeah. She was like, I don't like the book. Yeah. And, you know, growing up, like, I never saw a character with the name Malaika. I never saw wow. even characters with, you know, kind of same skin tone, same hair texture. So that, um, to me, is successful. And then I have people sending me, like, their children doing book reports on Amina's Afro. So it's really, um, you know, fulfilling to know that it's making a difference. Good. Uh, I have always nurtured, and I said nurtured the idea of being a children's um, book writer, simply, like I said, because I, f I saw the need earlier on mm -hmm. that kids need to, children, as we are growing up in a community, need to learn how to pronounce names from other cultures and how can they learn. And I thought to myself, to myself, 
that the best way to learn is to begin to write books that has these names in the books. And I even, I believe I discussed that with my kids, but they think it's one of those things you're talking about. You know, so I'm really, that's why I'm so happy to have this book and to see you grow up writing this book. And I hope that more will come. Yes. Yeah. Um. Again, if you are to make a wish, what would be your wish? Um, I would wish that uh, as far as community and, you know, our society, that everyone can just be more accepting, more inclusive, more um, open-minded of different backgrounds, different cultures. Um, one of the sort of other challenges with the books is that when people see, like, a black girl with a big afro on the cover, they don't think that it's for them. They'll say, oh, my daughter's best friend is black. She should read this book. But it's like, your daughter can also read the book because in the end, it's not just about being black or having an afro. It's about, you know, embracing yourself, loving yourself. Like, there's messages for everyone. So that mm -hmm. really touched on a good point there because she, you do touch on a good point. If, oh, that's my friend. My daughter has a friend that is black, so we'll buy her the book. Yeah, you know. And yet, um, people of color go to the store and buy books. Yeah. And just buy books regardless of where it comes from. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's um, uh, the recent remake of The Little Mermaid with mm -hmm. Halle Bailey that was considered to be controversial because how can you have a black Little Mermaid? Well, she's a mermaid. So, you know, anyway, yeah. but for me, like, like you said, growing up as children, when we don't have that representation, we had to sort of create it for ourselves. So to me, The Little Mermaid was my favorite princess because it wasn't just about a mermaid who was, you know, going to land. It was about like an immigrant who is finding a new culture, getting assimilated, and she's struggling in an interracial relationship. So I related to that because that's like what my parents and grandparents had to go through. And then with The Little Mermaid too, where her daughter, uh, you know, returns to the sea, it's not just about a girl returning to the sea. Mm -hmm. It's about a girl who grew up in one culture and she's trying to connect with mm. the part of her culture that she didn't grow up with and so that's like us growing up in Canada but we have uh yeah. you know cultural backgrounds so it's like back to your point it's interesting because we as people of color have to find ways to relate yeah. to the, these stories with white characters but when it's the other way, they just can't seem to do it. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. that It's funny that, uh, you know, we are going that direction direction about even with children's book. Yeah. I, I, I once uh, had um, one of my colleagues at work was, went to, um, you know, it was on a Monday, and I asked, how was your weekend? And he said, oh, we went to this gathering. Uh, but I had to leave. I said, oh, what was the gathering all about? And he said, oh, yeah, it was this and that. But I had to leave. I said, where did you leave? If he looks like four, he said, oh, I was the only white person there. <laughs> so I felt, oh, I'm the only black person now <laughs> in the midst of everybody, but I'm not leaving. Yeah. But so um, viewers, um, we have Malaika Mustafa today with us talking about writing uh, the books that she has written based from her family and this is our community and this is also your community we want to make our community great we want to make our community look better we want to make our community all inclusive and we want to make our community reflect the diversity that we all have and uh, viewers um um this is our time to begin to make things work towards those things that make us as a community look beautiful and one of them is having Malaika today present her book, uh, her two books that she has written based from her experiences growing up in Winnipeg. And I'm sure you don't want your children coming up to also experience what you did, but rather to have a community that welcomes them where every child is free to run around, where every child is free to bring their own lunches and everybody, every child sits at the table and eat their lunches. 
together in love, right? So um, I think that's where we are in our community today, that we have our, pe our own people in the community working hard to make the community a better place. Thank you, Malaika. Yes, thank you again for having me. Yeah. We are. Um, before we end the, um, the show, is there anything you want to talk about regarding uh, directing people where to get your book if they want to buy a book? Where do they get the book? Uh, the books are available on Amazon, and uh, you can find the link on my website, malaikamustafa.com. And uh, everything is there. I know uh, there have been like some schools and stuff who like if you want to basically order more than, you know, one or two, then definitely don't hesitate to reach out and I'd be happy to help you with that. Once again is malaikamustafa.com. Yes. Uh, her website, if you want a copy of the book, you can go to malaikamustafawebsite.com and order the book, or you can go to Amazon and type Malaika Mustafa or any of the headings of the book, Jam Jamila's Family or Amina's Afro, and it will pop up for you. So thank you for joining us once again. Thank you for being here, and thank you for enriching and helping us build our community. Um, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you.